today we are going to be installing cruise control into my 2007 Audi A4 Avant. If you've got an S-Line with a multi-function steering wheel, apparently the only thing you need to do to install this is actually buy the cruise control stalk. These are about 30 quid off of eBay, really easy to pick up. I'll leave the part number in the description. Another thing you'll need as well is to code it in. I'm gonna be using OBD11 Pro. Doesn't matter if it's the new version or the old version, they both do the same thing. This one's just a bit quicker. You'll also need your standard tools from Halfords, like little socket sets, things like that. Uh, the only thing that I would go and buy is this hex tool, which is in the description because it needs to get into a really awkward place where your standard sockets are too fat. There is one problem that you might encounter when you're trying to do this, which I found out right at the end, and that is that your clutch switch might be broken. There's no real signs of it being broken, but if it is broken, cruise control is not gonna work. I'm gonna show you, using OBD11, how to figure out if your clutch switch is working or not. Like usual, plug it in. Put the ignition on, open up the app, connect it up, OBD11 too. So let's just scan it first. Ready, coming in. You wanna look, you wanna learn. So Duff, we do. Click these three things down here. Yeah, brings up all the control units. So now you wanna go into zero one, which is engine. Then you wanna go down to live data. Then you wanna go to channel zero six, which is cruise control system. Where do you wanna go? <laughs> Where do you wanna go? You can't really go anywhere right now, we're in a lockdown. I'm gonna try and explain it as easy as possible. These numbers here is what the pedals are doing and everything down here explains what they should mean. So for example, the brake pedal switch should be the second to last number. So at the moment it's on zero because I'm not pressing the brake pedal. If I press the brake pedal, it goes to a one. You can see that the last number is turning to a one as well because it makes the brake light switch operated. It's quite clever. Uh, accelerator pedal, you can see from that what I'm doing. The third one down is telling me that the clutch switch is operated. But if I push it down, nothing changes, even though my foot is being pushed on the clutch. So that to me is telling me that the clutch switch is broken. Luckily, it's a really easy fix. I think I bought the part for about 25 pounds, uh, genuine from Volkswagen. I'm now waiting for it to arrive so I can finish the video, but let's jump back a week Let's start this video up and I'm gonna show you how to install cruise control. Really hope you enjoy. Leave a like if this is helpful at all and I'll see you at the end when we get the clutch switch. What a horrible day. So it's a good job that most of what we're doing today is gonna to be inside the car and not outside the car standing in this. Okay, so to be installing cruise control, I'm gonna tell you up front what we're gonna be taking off. So we're gonna to have to remove this trim this whole panel, top cowling, the bottom cowling, the airbag, the steering wheel. There's a little rubber surround in there, which is called like the, the squeegee or, or something, something silly like that. But we're gonna be taking that off as well. And then we're gonna eventually have to take both wiper stalks out to slot the cruise control one in and underneath. And then we're gonna do everything we just did, but backwards to put it back together. Let's go. Hopefully the camera set up. It's good enough. I was gonna try and stick the camera onto a window, but because it's so wet, it's just not sticking. Let's get this done because I'm freezing and I want to go back inside as soon as possible. Get the key, turn the key so the steering lock isn't there. Turn the steering wheel 90 degrees. There's two little grommets either side with uh, Torx screws. And I believe that it is a T20 Torx bit. A T25 also seems to fit. So I'll go with the bigger one and see where we get to. So the airbag is now loose. Straighten the wheel back up. Okay, this is the scariest bit because it's an airbag. So now that it's loose, we need to unclip the wires from the back. The best way that I've just looked up how to do it is to disconnect it from the main hub. There's two clips here, but there's a one big one there. So we just need to disconnect that and hopefully it doesn't blow up in our face. All right, there's that one. Now there's just like a, another connector on the bottom. And there we go, the airbag is out. I'm gonna put this down here. Now I can relax a little bit because I would say that's the scariest part out of the way. The next thing that we need to do is get this off. And as you can see, there's a big bolt there in the middle. We need to undo that. This middle bolt, it is an M12. So 
a big chunk of a bolt. The steering wheel was off. So they're, they're the awkward size screws at the back. I think in the end they ended up being, yeah, they look like a T30. A T30 fix, fits them perfectly, but obviously you can't see that when it's on the car. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is get this off. So we're at this stage now where we need this tool. Link is in the description. And there's two bits here. This is a T8, you need the T8 and you need it to be this thin to be able to reach up all the way inside and crack this open. Thank God this is the right size. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this video for so long, but I couldn't because things were getting in the way. Size four hex screw, guys. Let me go and get the right tools. It's a four millimeter Allen key, but you have to push it in quite hard and get some leverage for it to come off. We're finally there. The bolt is out. I can't wait to do this all back up. This lower trim is removed, which hopefully means that we can now get this out, which does reveal the plug right there. Right, so I think what it's essentially saying is that we've got to take this entire thing off. With some magical powers, this bit now comes off. Be careful not to snap two of the clips. I've, I've accidentally snapped them. And now we're left with this. You have to take both indicator stalks off to get the left side out of the way so that we can put the cruise control stalk in. This one should now slip in behind it. That looks about right. And it's in. It's very loose because the screws didn't come with, with the kit, did it? There we go, that's a bit better. I've nicked some screws from the other ones. Now I'm gonna put everything back together and it's probably gonna be dark by the time I get through with this, so I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. It's the morning and as you can probably see, it's cold and you can probably hear it's fucking windy. The proper way to do this is to spend an extra 30 quid and buy a lower cowling which has a gap for the cruise control stalk. However, I'm a stingy guy and I'm not gonna spend 30 quid. What I'm gonna do instead is cut a hole. I've measured it out. It drops about five centimeters below the existing hole. So I've drawn a little template. I'm gonna cut that out and see if it fits. Of course, if you're going for the neat look, go ahead and find a proper genuine one. As you can see, I'm fully dressed up for cutting stuff. Yeah, I forgot when I woke up this morning that I was already doing this. Right, so after a bit of backwards and forwards cutting and sanding, uh, this is what we've got. Not the neatest thing. If there's a bit of a gap, I'll probably stick some, I don't know, might, might even stick some like, electrical tape. Just like that, just to cover any gaps, if there are any. Let's go take a look at what it looks like. The wheel is back on, the cruise control is on, everything seems to be in order, everything works. Oh, I actually, I forgot to put these clips back on. Don't forget these guys. Okay, right now my thoughts are, that as soon as I connect the battery out, the car's gonna freak out, realize the steering wheel's come off, something's gonna flip, and the airbag's gonna go off. I know that's probably not the case, but we'll see what happens. Let's connect the battery back up. Airbag and steering wheel still in one piece. That's come up, so the car has life. Let's put the key in. I'm actually really scared, I don't know why. Steering wheel controls work. Indicators work. Let's try this. Oh God, I need new wiper blades. Now that cruise control is installed, and you've probably noticed that on the dash, there's about 20 million lights now. So first of all, what we're gonna do is clear all the faults and then go and do some long coding. So once you've scanned the car, cleared all the faults, go to that little three dots, go to engine, go to coding two, and then type in that number. Now we're gonna go and click OK. Coding two accepted. All right, now we need to go back to this list of all the engine modules, control units, and we need to go to, where is it? Steering column. And we'll go to coding one on that one. So 0041. When I was filming this part, I realized I kind of made a big oopsie. When you go into the steering column coding, 
before touching anything, you need to see what the coding value is at. There is a way to kind of tell as well if you scroll down. If you have a standard steering wheel with no multifunction, then the number needs to be a zero. If you have it with a telephone control, it needs to be a three, things like that. If you if you did a me and you kind of fucked up and you just put in whatever number you read online, there is a way to go back and see what it what it should have been in the first place. So if you go back into steering column, go to history, scroll all the way down, you can see uh, the old value 02012. And I, for some stupid reason, put in 00041. So that's basically telling my car, don't bother about the steering wheel controls or steering wheel input, because it changed it to a zero, so it canceled it out. And only then have I now realized you only need to change the one which says cruise control, which is the second to last number, cruise control installed or board computer and cruise control installed. Which is why I've changed the second to last number to a four. That's all you need to do. Don't change anything else. Coding accepted. And I think it's easy as that. Right, let's turn the car off and see what it's looking like. There's only one more thing I want to do before we go on a drive. And I think it's about time that this happened. Sorry it's about two years late, but a massive thank you to Roller Plates, who sent me out these plates to put on the Golf when I still had it, but I just never got around to putting them on. It's time, baby, we're back. Oh my God, it suits it so much. Guys, do me a favor, go head over to Roller Plates. Tell them I said hi. I'm so happy that these are finally going on. It makes absolutely no sense anymore because obviously these went on my Mark IV, which is a 1.8 turbo. And obviously the R32 is a 3.2 litre engine. I was trying to be funny and put R18 because it was a 1.8 litre. Makes absolutely no sense, but it's a good memory now. At the moment, nothing is showing up on the dash. Both the coding things got accepted, but I've read somewhere that you need to drive. You actually need to go on like a decent drive for it to recognize and to kick in. So that's what we're going to do. I might have to pull over and see if... Still nothing. The clutch switch has finally arrived. It's been about, it must have been over a week since I ordered it, but anyway, it's here. And this is what it is. So basically, this like slots in under there. And as you put your foot on the clutch, that pushes the, the sensor in to feel when you're on the clutch. And that, that's what it should do anyway. Mine for some reason is broken and it doesn't recognize it. So. Let's quickly insert this. Basically what you want to do is yeet this off. I've already taken all the bolts off. And then you can see the clutch switch just down there. So basically what you want to do, unplug it by squeezing the two tongs together. Then you're going to want to twist it to the left about 90 degrees. And then it pops out like that. So this is the old one. And that is a lot harder to push in than that one. Same way to install it, push it in, turn it to the right 90 degrees and then clip it in and hopefully a new clutch switch and before i go and bolt the panel back in if we go on a quick test drive have you got your obd 11. when i push my foot onto the pedal this should now change to a one which it does so that to me is now fixed it's not yet showing on the dash when i turn this on but i think we might need to go for a bit of a drive again to test it It doesn't do anything when I click it in, but it does it when I click set. And we've got it, we, I think, can we adjust it? But it is working, cruise control is working. With the Passat, it would come up on the big screen saying like what, um, what miles per hour it would kick in at, but this one doesn't. So we can confirm that is how you install it. Do you fucking mind? That is how you install cruise control. Right, so to sum up what just happened, nothing shows up when you just play around with the stalk, unlike on the Passat. Again, nothing shows up when you turn the car on. So what happened was at about 50 miles an hour, I turned the switch on, nothing happened, and then I clicked set, and I saw the green light come up on the dash. Ah, oh, right, we're gonna end it there because this video has been such a long and confusing one. I'm sorry if it was a bit all over the place. I kept finding out new information that I need to jump back and tell you guys so that you didn't make the same mistake I did. If this video has helped you out at all, 
and you are now having this lovely, lovely cruise control stalk into your Audi A4, uh, please go ahead and leave a like, uh, leave a comment. If you've got any questions, I'll try my best to help figure it out. Uh, of course, subscribe if you haven't already. If you wanna grab OBD 11 Pro, highly suggest it because that has been my savior for this. It's allowed me to activate it. It's allowed me to diagnose the faults with the clutch switch and then find out why my steering wheel controls aren't working. So yeah, link is in the description for that. Thank you for watching guys. And I will see you in the next video, which will hopefully be next Sunday or the Sunday after that. Cheers, guys. See you later.